Okay, we now move to the last part of um, today. We have a very, very special talk by Harsh Singh. And in case you're not familiar, Harsh is going to give a talk titled Database Designed 101, where uh, we'll go through the basic steps of de designing a database from defining an objective all the way to normalization. And Harsh is a 10th high school student from New York. He's interested in web development and design. And he likes to participate in his school's robotics club. When he's not coding, he likes riding bicycles and playing basketball. So now I bring you Harsh. How's it Hello. going, Harsh? It's going good. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming. I have a background noise in the thing. Can you hear that? Oh, yep, yep, yep. One second. All right. Okay, we lost Harsh for a moment. Perhaps he's fixing the sound in the background. Um, let's see if we get him back. Uh, I think many of you are quite excited to hear this talk. Uh, talk about schema design, normalization, all of those great things. And in the meanwhile, until Harsh comes back, I probably should remind you that we have the uh, we have the, let me just remove, fix the brand. Yeah, we have the raffle happening. Um, and so you can join the raffle if you haven't already. That's available at, uh... oh, here we have you again, Harsh. Mm -hmm. So one moment, I'm just uh, announcing the raffle. So we're gonna be giving away the designing data intensive applications. You can go to prisly, pris.ly slash meetup dash raffle um, and sign up there if you wanna participate. And we'll, we, we will announce the winner at the end. So uh, now I bring you back, Harsh, and you've already, mm -hmm. I see, shared your ski screen. Mm -hmm. um, let's see if we can get the nameplates. Okay, we got the nameplates too. Okay, so Harsh, the stage is yours. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. So my talk today is on database design. Uh, so without further ado, let's get right into it. So a little bit about me here. Um, my name is Harsh Singh. I'm a high school student. Um, I'm currently 15 years old and I'm in 10th grade. Uh, web development is my hobby right now. I dip my feet in uh, everything. I do front end, back end, and uh, web design along with database stuff. Here's just my socials, my website, Twitter, GitHub, Instagram, and my email. If you ever have any questions or want to reach out to me, feel free to email me. So let's start with the founding question here first. What is a database? As per oracle.com, a database is an organized collection of structured information or data typically stored electronically in a computer system. So in short, a database is a way to store data in a computer system. So now let's talk about what is database design. Database design is the name given to the process of designing a database. This process consists of the design, development, and the maintenance of a database. Now, here's just a look at all the things we'll be covering. We'll be looking at the different types of databases, relational databases. Then we'll be looking at how we uh, design a database. So starting from defining an objective to organizing the information. Then we'll take a closer look at uh, data relationships and the different types of relations in data. Then we'll be looking at how we test our design. Then we'll be taking a look at normalization. Then we'll be taking a look, a deeper look at the different stages of normalization. And then we'll just sum it up by doing a review of what is a good database design. So let's take a look at the different types of databases. We have centralized databases, NoSQL databases, cloud, object-oriented, relational, distributed, network, and hierarchical databases. These are the eight main types of databases which are most commonly used. But out of the five databases supported by Prisma, four are relational. And for that purpose, we'll mainly focus on relational databases today. Now, what is a relational database? As per oracle.com, a relational database is a type of database that stores and provides access to data points that are related to one another. Now, let's move on to the actual steps of designing a database. We first start by defining an objective. The foundation of designing a database is figuring out which objective your database aims to serve. For instance, if you're a doctor, you could be designing a database to assign appropriate prescriptions to your patients. For this sample design, let's say we're a university and we're designing our database to keep track of our students, teachers, 
dorms and the courses we offer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So after we have some information uh, and uh, we can start to organize it into tables and columns, we can we need to divide our main entities into individual tables. So in our case, we can create a table for students, teachers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Next, we need to make columns and fields within our tables. For instance, our teacher table could contain their name, their contact, email, and the courses that they teach. Next, let's take a look at data relationships. This is the part in the data design process where we look at our different tables of data and determine how they're related to one another. Based on the relationships between the tables, we can add new fields to further clarify the relationships. Now, let's take a look at relationships and data. As suggested by the name, data relations hold great importance in relational databases. They help refine table structures along with minimizing redundant data. Any association between two entities is called a relationship. There are three types of data relationships that exist between pairs of tables. So let's take a look at them. So first we have one-to-one -one relationships. As the name suggests, one-to-one -one relationships is when one record in a table is related to one record in another table. This relationship is rather uncommon and it's mainly used for security purposes. Generally, you'll see people, uh, they usually do you know, use a single column instead of a one-to-one -one relationship. And uh, the main purpose of it really is granular, uh, granular security. So here's just an example table that we have. Uh, we have students and we have the dorm rooms. One student can only have one dorm. Uh, in case you don't know what a dorm is, a dorm is basically a college room like a hostel. So uh, one student can only have one dorm. And to clarify this relationship between the two tables, we are using the student ID. Next, let's take a look at one-to-many and many-to-one relationships. In a one-to-many relationship, one record in a single table can be associated with multiple records in another table. This is the most common type of data relationship, and you will surely use it in a relational database. Now, let's take another look at um, this uh, one-to-many relationship. So we have the students and we have books issued. One student can have multiple books issued to them. And similar to the previous example, we're clarifying the relationship using the student ID. Uh, you can see one student has three, two, or two books uh, relation, um, issued to them. Next, let's take a look at many-to-many -many relationships. A many-to-many -many relationship works a bit differently than the other relations. A many-to-many -many relation occurs when multiple records in a table are related to multiple records of another table. And uh, as said above, relational databases uh, don't allow us to implement this relationship directly between two tables, which is why I said it works a bit differently than um, other relations. A workaround for this is breaking this relationship into two one-to-many relationships and adding in a third table, which is known as a join table. Now here we have our three table example. First we have students and their student ID. Then we have the different courses which are available and the students which are taking it along with the teachers which are teaching it. And then we have the teachers. So we have a one-to-many relationship between the students in the courses and as we've been using the student id uh, we're using the student id to clarify the relationship between the two tables and the courses and the teachers also have a, a relationship and uh, we're using the teacher id to clarify it now let's move on to testing our design this is the part where we test our database design and find some potential bugs. So to do so, we can create sample data and add it into our database, experiment and play around with the example data by sending data queries and or adding in more data. This will help us find faults in our design. After this step, we'll have to adjust our database design accordingly. Now let's move on to a important part of database design, which is applying normalization rules. Simply put, normalization is the reorganization of data in a database. Normalization is a bit tricky. Since table joins are required, queries and indexing becomes more complicated, slowing down the database read speeds. Sometimes we'll even see people denormalize their databases after normalization to improve performance. Now let's look at the stages of normalization. 
the process of normalization can be broken down into three different stages. For this, we'll start out with an example data set and slowly apply our normalization rules. So here's our example data set. We have the student ID, student name, the course they're taking, the zip they're from, and the city that they're from. So we have first normal form. The first stage of normalization has two main rules. Firstly, that each, uh, each cell should contain a single value. And secondly, that the, each entry should be unique. Now let's apply these rules into our data set. So now you can see for the students who are taking multiple courses, we have a brand new rule for them. Now let's move on to second normal form. And the second stage of normalization has two rules. Firstly, that the table should be in first nominal form, which it is. And secondly, that uh, no non-prime attribute is dependent on the proper subset of any candidate key of table. So that's a bit of a complicated definition. So to simplify it, 2NF aims to make our database tables more independent, and it creates new data tables for data which isn't related to the table's primary key. So as you can see, we've uh, broken, broken apart the table with uh, the course names, since course names doesn't really have, since course names uh, doesn't really have anything to do with the student ID, we can partition it into a new table to uh, make our database more independent and to avoid uh, more bugs and further add in data. Now let's move on to third normal form. So the third stage of normalization has two rules. Firstly, that the table should be in second normal form. And secondly, that uh, transitive functional dependency of non-prime attributes on any super keys should be removed. Now that's also a pretty complicated, uh, pretty complicated wording. So to simplify it, a transitive functional dependency is when changing one column might cause another column to change. So in this step, we need to find these dependencies and split our table again to avoid potential bugs. So as you can see, we've uh, split apart the student zip with the student city because when we change the zip code, uh, we'll change the city and the student zip code is dependent on the student city. So we've just partitioned it into another table and that's uh, our table in third nor uh, normal form. So now let's just review it really quickly. What exactly is good database design? So before we end it, let's review how a good database design functions. A good database design is well organized. It has minimal redundancy. It works well with operators. It provides accurate data and it ensures the reliability of data. Um, so that's it. Database design is an essential step towards consistency within the data, efficient queries, and a high performance application. Uh, we've covered the basics of it to get you started designing your database today. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the live chat. Thank you so much, Harsh. That was quite insightful. My pleasure. So you've sort of given a, a, a nice background to one, um, all, all, all the different kinds of relations that you have in relational databases. And I'm curious, how do you, what, what is your process when you're sort of, uh, when you have a problem at hand and you want to model that um, using a database? Do you have sort of a series of steps that you go through? Um, generally, I don't because prob uh, problems definitely, uh, especially within these uh, databases, there's a uh, pretty wide range of pro problems which I face. So uh, I don't exactly have a specific uh, set of steps which I take. It, it mainly depends on problem to problem that I encounter. I mm -hmm. Well, on that note, let's see if we have any questions. Um, this is your moment if you have any questions. Um, we had a lot of really, really nice comments from the crowd. Um, mm -hmm. Insane presentation, huh? <laughs> yeah. mm. So if we don't have any questions, I'd like to thank you, Harsh, for giving the talk mm -hmm. and for giving us the walkthrough of database design. Mm -hmm. My pleasure.